Welcome back to the Spa Business Mastery Podcast. I'm Kirsten Foss, and today I have a really special guest. We are talking about uh, marketing for the beauty and wellness industry, and I, I know y'all hate marketing. <laughs> I mean, hate's a strong word, but you kind of do. So um, I brought on somebody that I met in this past month, Samantha Howarth, and she is somebody who, like me, uses marketing, um, our marketing inspiration from a different source rather than the traditional form of marketing, which is the one we all really don't like to do. So welcome, Samantha, to the Spa Business Mastery podcast. Um, please share a little bit about kind of where, what your, uh, what your magic is when it comes to marketing and how did you come, uh, like, how did you come to this space with your marketing? Yeah, awesome. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Um, so my background, I guess I'll start there and just kind of walk you through how I got to where I am today. Wow. Um, but I, I own um, the company I created. I'm the founder of The Way She Was Made, um, and it is holistic lifestyle and marketing. So my background is in um, graphic design and advertising and right out of college, I jumped into the corporate world. I thought that's where like stability was. That's kind of the path that you should be on. The should being the key word there of diving in um, to that that whole space of corporate marketing. And after being, I was at the company that I was at for about five years, um, wound up building their global merchandising and gifting program. And I just felt burnt out. And I felt like, <laughs> is this it? Like, is there more? What's happening here? Um, so after COVID, I started to see kind of which I think was a big turning point for a lot of people, but I saw the opportunity to work from home, kind of do my own thing, um, bring some more passion and life to it. So that I started dabbling into different options of like freelance working, creative direction, working with smaller businesses. And that's where I really kind of felt lit up. I really loved like the marketing side of things with smaller businesses, specifically women that were entrepreneurs. Um, I had also done a little bit of event planning and wedding planning during that time frame. So dabbling in all of these things, I wound up actually burning myself out um, and going through a holistic <laughs> journey. <laughs> yeah. So I totally burnt myself out um, from trying all the different things. It was really like self-exploration, but I was diving in and like trying all the things at once. So as through that whole process, I went on a holistic journey um, and found out that I had adrenal fatigue, which happens to a lot of us. I think female entrepreneurs in general can get very excited about things, go all in, and then kind of hit that burnout mode. So I worked with a functional practitioner who helped me to get some holistic practices. Through that whole journey, I came up with, um, well, not I came up with, but I found cycle syncing, um, which was huge in helping me balance my hormones. And I was like, why don't more women know this? Um, so in the space of being a female entrepreneur myself and working with so many female entrepreneurs, I wanted to create a marketing program that helped women to market themselves in a way that felt aligned, but also that was sustainable and didn't burn out. Um, so my program brings in similarly to what you do. I bring in human design and astrology to kind of inform how we're meant to connect with the world. So creating that personal strategy, and then we implement that using cycle syncing. So bringing it all together as a holistic solution. Wow. There's like two really big things there. So like one is like, you know, like you said, you do this with human design and astrology. Same thing with numerology is like, we're approaching marketing from a completely different place like rather com than coming from this place of um you know what do my clients want or what do the consumers want and like having this nebulous you know trying to like the demographics the psychographics and it, it feels like a big guessing game for most of us that are not marketers and so what you're doing um with the human design and astrology and the cycle thinking is really sourcing our marketing inspiration from ourselves which of course that would feel so much more aligned like just not as hard right yes. Yeah, yeah, totally. And that's that's kind of the perspective that I have for my whole program is like, let's take a step back and make you the strategy, uh, especially if you're a female entrepreneur in the wellness space or something like that, where you probably have a personal story that connected you that got you to that point. And it's a very personal thing for you to have a service based business or something that is so connected to people on such a deep level. You want it to feel authentic. And oftentimes as women, too, we struggle with the um need to push a sale kind of, or we don't want to feel salesy. We don't want to, we have to make money, but like, it's kind of a thing that there's like that yeah. weird 
Yeah. yeah. There's this weird connection between serving and then asking for money, like as reciprocity. And it feels really awkward for a lot of uh, this industry for sure. Yeah. And that's where I started to see like, okay, there's a big resistance here, but really like if we think about it, money is an energetic, money is energy and it's an energetic exchange for something that you're doing that you're very passionate about and that you're helping somebody with. Um, so it's just kind of breaking those walls down and seeing how can we go back inside and use us as the strategy. Um, and there's kind of like the two part piece of that. So like with human design or numerology and astrology and bringing in all of those things, it gets you to understand you and how you're designed to connect with the world. But then when you implement that, using yourself as the strategy for consistency and a structure and having that like masculine feminine balance so that you can be in the flow while having a structure there that is there to support you. And that, and that is the masculine, the divine masculine, di divine feminine. The divine masculine is the structure. Mm -hmm. It's the system. It's the direction. And the divine feminine is the flow and the creativity in there. So I love that. Like, it's not like, it's not like we're throwing out the masculine. Like what we're throwing right. out is like the old version, the toxic masculinity, the, the freaking bro marketing. I'm just so done with it. And <laughs> You know, I know like a lot of my audience might not know what bro marketing is, but they have experienced it and felt it and listened to it. It's, it's the, the icky marketing that is very much about scarcity and lack and fear. And, you know, it's like, rah, rah, bye, bye, you know, it's just, bleh. um, yeah. and so what we want to do, we don't want to throw out the masculine, the masculine. So it's so integral for a balanced approach at life, but yeah. we're looking at that healthy version of masculine, which is that directive, the, the organized, the systematized aspect of it. Yeah. And then pairing it with like that creativity and the flow, like the, the flow and all of that too. Like you need both pieces. It just okay. has to be balanced. Yeah. And that's probably why that kind of bro marketing feels so gross. Cause it's, there's not an ounce of feminine feminine energy to it it's right. just very harsh and masculine so okay can we talk a little bit more about like can we dive in into like okay how does this work so like with human design and astrology okay so I, I'm gonna back up the bus a little bit I hired you to do create a new logo for mm -hmm. my uh, solo solo business membership <clears throat> and so I had given you my current uh, colors and brand and stuff like that, but I'm also in this little middle place where I'm, I'm needing to rebrand because a big part of my business is change. Like I'm more into the yeah. energetics of my business. And five years ago when I had that branding and logo done, I, I, I wasn't there. <laughs> I was kind of yeah. a different person. So I had you create a logo for the solo business. And what I loved was that even though I, like I gave you my colors when it was like, this wasn't working, yeah, like, it just didn't work. And so you offered to use my human design and astrology chart that you did for me uh, and suggested some colors. And all of a sudden I was like, Oh yes, <laughs> this is way more like I, it was total pre-verbal. I didn't know how to, even share with you what I wanted. Yeah. Like I just knew the old kind of stuff. Can we make it work? Cause I don't, you know, anyways, I, that was just so cool how you used. So first of all, you did, you created a, um, you gave me a reading, a human design and yep. astrology reading. Right. Mm -hmm. And then from there you used what my reading was that, that input, those data inputs and you created uh, a color palette for me that was, totally not what I was expecting but I looked at it and went oh, I love it yeah <laughs> so yeah. let's get into that that little piece there I was like how do you source it like how does the astrology and human design kind of spiritual aspect like how do you make that into those tangible branding pieces yeah no I love that and it was such a fun process and I think that's a great example of how when people come to us sometimes as marketers, they think like, okay, this is what I need. I need somebody to do my content on Instagram. I need somebody to do this. I need somebody to do like this update to my website. But really um, what I like to do is to kind of take a step back and say, okay, something isn't working here, but let's take a step back and go back into you to see where that mismatch is. So the, it's kind of like a, a 
brand and energy audit, if you will. Um, so that's kind of one of my offers where it's like, okay, let's take a look at where your brand is now, where that's sitting, where is that mismatched with your energy and your energetics and like who you are in your personal essence. And for me, human design and astrology is such like an, a powerful tool. I use them both in combination because I think they're both very similar, but they give you a slightly different view to give you a holistic perspective on how it all works. So for me, human design is really something that you take a step back and it gives you clues onto who you are as a person, like your personality, as far as your profile and how you interact with the world. And it helps you to create a marketing strategy that feels really good for you, but it's going to help you to be able to connect with people more naturally and more organically by using some of those things when you're in the flow. Yeah. And then the astrology components, I really like for more of like the visual, the visual branding. Cause if you look at your son, that's kind of like your core essence um, and your values and all of those things and what we can bring in some values of like colors that might represent that or like tapping into the color theory and things like that. Um, your moon is kind of more of the shadow side or the energetics of all of that. And then your uh, Venus sign, which I really love, kind of gives you a fun play on your visual branding. So like the colors, I pulled a lot from your sun and then also your Venus sign kind of paired the two together to get that pretty fun palette that we have. Um, but I love bringing the, like all of those components together because a lot of times we don't know what we don't know. And we see all these things that are happening online and we're like, oh, that worked for so-and-so. Like, let me go ahead and do that. But paid ads might work great for some people. Some people it doesn't work very great for. Um, so tapping into what works for you, what feels good for you, what lights you up. And sometimes peeling back the layers and going into that foundation of human design and astrology gets us out of our head and more into, yeah, that feels really good. Let me, let me go in that direction. And by presenting those offers of like, this is your core essence astrologically um, and with your human design, I think that's where that alignment and that magic kind of came in. It's just so like, you know, like puzzle pieces fitting together, right? Like, yeah. so, you know, the numerology and the uh, human design, uh, I love how those are the strategic places that we, we both are looking at for marketing strategy, but I just love how you used astrology for those visual brand representations. I wouldn't, I, where else can that happen? Like, because I didn't, those weren't colors that I wouldn't, wouldn't have necessarily chosen for a, my brand. Yeah. And yet, you know, the, the visual representation actually to me was like those kind of California cotton candy skies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I always like we get those cotton candy skies here in BC in Canada and they're in the evening and they're just so there's this kind of liminal space that you feel like you're in with those cotton candy skies. It's like, it's like anything's possible. It's like this yeah. magic hour. And I was just, when I saw the colors that you, that were for me, I was like, oh, cotton candy skies. How did she know? So I guess what I'm saying is that the branding becomes soul sourced. Yes. Rather than sourced from like what you, what you're the service that you're doing or anything like that. So it's like, I just, I can't see and I can't understand where else you would get that kind of core branding that's so much a part of who you are yeah that okay. that's something that I think was always missing for me like within the corporate space it was always just like oh just do this this and this and it was like uh you know like the bro kind of thing of like here's the structure here's a checklist you do that but I was like there's something else deeper here so that's I, I feel like you need those elements for sure absolutely and I and it'll just make I know that our listeners their you know their eyes are just gonna be what what do you mean like it just makes it takes the question out of it like what you should be doing like what should my brand be what should you know those those yeah. thing where should I be going strategically okay so can you can we shift a little bit and talk about the cycle syncing and how yes. this works with marketing please explain uh yes I love I love this whole component of it because I, some people might have heard of cycle syncing it's become something that's um I, hopefully being more well-known. Um, I think all women need this in their life. Um, so again, I came into contact with it first when I was trying to balance my hormones. So I hit adrenal fatigue. My hormones actually went postmenopausal by the time I was 27. Oh my so, God. <laughs> like, I meant, I meant very, 
I'm in perimenopause, so I know exactly what that would be. Uh, that's why my eyes yeah. are so plugged out. <laughs> oh my god! And it's it's like what is happening? Like I had no idea what was happening. I had new, you know, stress is bad, but you didn't. I didn't know it was bad. like it could do that. Yeah. Um. So when I saw it on a test, and like everything was basically like flatline, and it was just completely like postmenopausal ranges for all my hormones, I was like okay, I need to do something here. So like working with that functional doctor was super eye-opening. And that whole process for me, cycle syncing is really of like the mind-body connection. So getting out of your head and getting into your body of like, what are my energy levels today? What can I do to support myself naturally to kind of help that? So just on a basic level, what cycle syncing is, um, for those of you who might not know um, or may have heard of it and just don't really understand what it is, it's adapting your lifestyle into a cyclical form. So going back to like bro marketing and the corporate worlds, nine to fives and things like that are based around really a, horm a man's hormone schedule. Um, so men, we, I mean, all humans have the circadian rhythm where it's that 24 hour cycle, but men's hormones reset every 24 hours where women, we have a full 28 day, typically around their 28 to 30 day cycle. And we're taught when we're little that like, okay, you get a period, that's your cycle. And we often kind of think of it as like a bad thing of like, oh, it's you yeah, get like we cramps. have to like endure it. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's this thing that you have to deal with for like the rest of your life or not the rest of your life, but like a whole chunk of your life. Um, and it's going to be miserable that whole week and yada, yada. And that's kind of how we're presented it. And it's just left at that. But really your cycle is a whole lot more than that. So there's actually four phases that your body goes through each month over the course of these 28 days. So the first phase, which is the menstrual cycle or the menstrual phase, and that is really only like the first one to five or seven days, depending on how long your cycle is. Um, and that is, I call them kind of like your inner seasons. So that's your inner winter, if you will. So that's very low energy. You know, think of it, you don't want to do like high, um, like hit workouts or like strength training or things like that during that time. You want to be more introspective and reflective. Um, and you can cycle sync your workouts. You can cycle sync your nutrition um, to support your body and your hormones and where you're at and what your body needs. But you can also cycle sync your business. So if you look at the menstrual phase, when you're looking at your business, don't plan to do like a, a big speech or something like that. A lot of um, outgoing activities, you want to be more strategic about that and plan activities that are like, what was working for me? What isn't working for me? Where can I adjust? Where can I set my schedule next month so that I am ahead of the game and it's aligned with my energy. Um, and then going into the second phase, which is your follicular phase, that's kind of your spring. So think of it as planting seeds. Um, you know, maybe you're reaching out to people for collaborations or things like that, starting to um, start new projects and do brainstorming and laying the groundwork and doing those kinds of things during this phase. Cause this part of your cycle is actually where you're going to be the most productive. Um, so that's where you are, your energy is rising and you're kind of like, okay, let's get stuff done. Um, so you've probably noticed throughout the month, like you have at times where you're energetically very low and then there's times where you have higher energy or you're more creative and things like that. And that's not by chance. It's kind of in alignment with all of these different phases. Um, as you move into the third phase, which is your ovulatory phase, that's kind of like full moon energy or, um, summer energy uh, as far as your internal seasons. And that's where you want to schedule those speaking engagements or podcasts, or maybe you're going to film your content during that week or something like that, where you have a lot of higher energy because you don't want to be filming content when you feel awful and you're about <laughs> to get your period and you're super low energy and that kind of a thing. So really optimizing these different energy levels and kind of checking in with yourself of like, okay, I can use this as a tool to guide me going forward. And then your fall, which is your luteal phase, um, that is going to be the last phase. It's actually the longest phase of the kind of the second half of your cycle coming off of your ovulatory phase. So your energy starts to dip a little bit um, and you'll start to notice yourself being a little bit more introspective, wanting to tie up loose ends on projects. Um, maybe you're scheduling your content during that time or editing or doing some things like that. That's more introspective, not as outgoing as you were during like the spring summer phases. Um, so that's kind of an overview of like wow. high level, what these different phases are. Wow. Wow. My brain is just like whirling. Well, the first thing that comes to mind when you talk about that is, oh man, I think that especially as women, like you said, we're, you know, we, we are so used to giving and, and giving and giving and doing and doing and doing that we are not at all used to paying attention to our bodies at all. 
unless it's really screaming at us. Yeah. And um, if I have one thing as far as like what I can share with younger women, like I'm 53 now, is especially as entrepreneurs and moms, is that protect your nervous system. Yes. At all costs, protect your nervous system. Like you will run out. And a lot of us have run out and had these little burnouts along the way, but those little burnouts, if we're not paying attention to them, it can lead to like full-on sickness, sickness. Like if you don't make time for your health, you're going to have to make time for your illness. And especially in an industry of so much giving and care, Mm -hmm. like hands-on care, um, I think for the most part, the beauty and wellness industry is not great at paying attention to their own selves and their own rhythms of their own bodies. And I think this is a place where we could all do a lot better and not in a, like a finger wagging kind of way, but like, just like supportive, like this is like, if you're wondering what it's going to take for you to be successful and generate the income and have those connections with people and clients and have those, you know, connection with self and source that has to be sourced. That energy has to be sourced from somewhere. And we have to be, we have to constantly be managing it. Mm -hmm. Um, I've come out of, I would probably say more of a, um, it wasn't a midlife crisis, but it was more of like a a real mental, physical health crisis. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like you just, I I had to start paying attention to myself, like at every moment when I was really in rough shape, like, you know, what, what do you need right now, body? Like, what do you need now? Like just constantly checking in with it. And I've been able to claw my way out of that because I've been able to check in with it. But what I love about what you're, what you're teaching and uh, sharing is that you know, on the daily, just kind of tapping into, okay, where am I at with my cycle? Do I have my week set up for this? Or have I totally like mismatched my weeks? And okay, next time, next month, I will adjust this to make it a little bit easier. But it's this message of, um, you know, really kind of sourcing from self and, you know, making sure that we are honoring ourselves so that we can play these bigger games in our business. Yeah. You know, and again, it's just like, it's that strategy. It's like, it's really, you are the strategy. It's you, it's, it is within you, all of that magic, like your special, um, the, the thing that makes you special, your brand essence, that's all within you. And it's the same thing of like checking with your energy and allowing yourself to keep that higher vibration. Um, and as I was going through the whole process, like you're talking about with your intuition and things like that, it, it got so much stronger once I realized because we suppress those feelings so much throughout the day, whether it's just like, oh, I can just, I can get this one more thing done. Let me, let me keep pushing through. Push, I'm, push. <laughs> I'm a Capricorn. So like <laughs> that push is like, that's my drive. That's what I just go for all the time. But you can't go, you, you have to understand that rest is also a necessary part of that. And by intentionally scheduling in some of those rest days where it's like, I'm going to be lower energy. I'm not going to do these big meetings. I'm not going to push myself on these days. I need to give myself more space you're going to be able to keep going a lot longer. So just tapping in with yourself. And if you don't have a cycle too, I want to mention for the women that either don't have a cycle anymore, or maybe you have an irregular cycle or something like that, you can still cycle sync. Um, So if you have an irregular cycle, it can actually help you get your cycle to be more scheduled because your body gets into a rhythm of like, oh, I can rest during these days and I don't have to push myself this hard. And it kind of starts to balance yourself out. But if you completely don't have a cycle, it's still beneficial to tap into, like if you're in perimenopause or menopause, to tap into that um, energy of like, you still need time to rest. And there's times when you can go all out, but there's times when you're just going to have some lower energy. And a lot of times I recommend going off of like the lunar cycle Mm -hmm. because the lunar cycle is about 28 to 30 days. And that fits in very well with that cyclical fashion of just using the full moon for that summer, that high energy versus new moon being more of like a menstrual phase energy. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cause I've had, I've had a hysterectomy, so I don't, I don't have my, my parts for that. So that's, so it's just basically, if you don't have a cycle at all, you kind of default to the lunar cycle. Yeah. 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 That's what I typically recommend because it's, it's easier. it, It is easier and it gives you kind of like 
a lot of people kind of do things around like the, the full moon and things like that. And if you actually look back on like ancient times of before we even knew what cycle syncing was or like anything like this, any technology before we had any of that stuff, people did full moon fertility dances because a lot of times women naturally ovulated around the full moon. Um, so then the new moon is kind of the opposite of that where it's the, the that reflection time or like a menstrual phase time. So tapping into those ancient wisdom, the cycles, um, it helps your body to feel in alignment and give yourself the cycles of like, okay, I'm in a cycle of rest this week. Next week, I can ramp it up a little bit more and get more into those planting the seeds phase versus like being go, go, go all the time. Yeah. And I think so many um, like spa owners, beauty and wellness owners, you know, when they're, it's so easy to get kind of stuck in the, like the business that kind of more the masculine aspect of business of, mm -hmm. like, you know, well, I need, you know, it'd be nice to have a rest, but I need cash flow. Like I'm running a business. Um, but I think this is where, you know, you know, perhaps starting, if you have heard something that you're like, oh, that's kind of interesting. But, and then the first thought is like, oh, that's not going to work for me. I'm too busy, blah, blah, blah. Um, I really invite you to even just think about this a little longer than just listening to the podcast and moving on with your day, but paying attention to how you feel throughout the month, like just your energy levels and how yeah. that is corresponding with your cycle. And maybe there's just a little bit of trying, like, like maybe I'll try, you know, paying attention to it more and following it. Right. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean like you have to take a, a week off work. Right. It just more means like, you know, not over scheduling yourself or, you know, making prioritizing self-care, quiet time, that kind of thing. So it's not sure. like an all or nothing. And this is really what I, I, love talking about spirituality and business it's kind of you know you're another person where you're helping all of us on earth integrate like spirit and spiritual modalities and how to bring spirit into earth like how to blend yeah. that that kind of heaven and earth piece with this yeah for sure. And I think that's really like the hardest part because we're in a society that doesn't prioritize rest. And we kind of, we tell women like we're looked down on for just taking rest or feeling like we can't do things at a, at a certain time. And it's not to say that you can't do those things, but there's, there's time and place for all of it and you can get it all done. But if you keep pushing yourself, then like you said, you're going to have to prioritize time for illness and it's going to be more of a hit. Yeah. Um, Versus just being strategic about it and using it as kind of a schedule. And, and like you said, you don't have to take a full week off, but maybe um, even start, like you said, the first step is really to just kind of recognize where the energy is. But then if you start to be like, okay, I noticed that I have less energy during this time, prioritize or maybe try cycle syncing something like your social media or like little components that you can control because mm -hmm. we can't always control when people book us for appointments or things like that so you I mean you can control some of your schedule of like how many people do you have that week or whatever that might look like but really like focus on maybe the back end of things I work with a lot of my clients that struggle whether they're like massage therapist or pelvic floor therapist or things like that um, they struggle with balancing the working on your business versus working in your business huge and so like if you can't necessarily wrap your head around how can I cycle sync working in my business focus on the working on your business because that's usually something that takes a back seat anyway and you can really create and prioritize strategy in that area of like okay this week I'm just going to write out my captions next week I'm going to film all the content then I'm going to edit it and schedule it so that it can bucket it and it feels less intimidating of like I have to do this every day I have to create a post every day different things like that. So there's little tips and tricks that you can integrate without diving all in head first. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I love this conversation. I am so glad that we were able to connect and for you to have time to come on here and, and, and talk about all these things. Cause when you, when we first connected, um, you were talking about them and I was like, Ooh, ooh. and then I'm like, Ooh, I want some of my own stuff first. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So um, I really appreciate that you took the time to, to share with us about, uh, about cycle syncing with our business. Um, that's huge. And about using um, astrology and human design for strategy and the astrology for visuals, I, as far as graphics and your branding, it's just a, amazing and a, a wonderful source. I know that 
um, that my followers will be quite interested in what you have to offer. So please share with me, uh, how can our listeners find you? Yeah. Um, oh, thank you for having me. I loved this conversation too. I could talk about this stuff all, all the time. Um, and it was super fun to work on your brand. Um, for people that want to get in touch with me or if they have any questions about cycle syncing, human design, what that looks like or how they can integrate it. I have um, my website is the way she was made.com. Um, so that's got a lot of information on it. I am in the process of relaunching my blog for that site. So that'll have some good details um, on social media, on Instagram, Pinterest, um, Facebook, everything is at the way she was made. Uh, so you can find me there. Threads, I've jumped on there, which Threads is actually, I'm intrigued by Threads. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, eh, keep like, go away. <laughs> I was too. I was like, oh, this is just trying to be like Twitter, but I've like jumped on it recently. I'm like, I think my people are here. Like I can, I can find them. So yeah, I'm on all the things at the way she was made. You can uh, message me there. Email is sam at the way she was made.com. If you have any questions, I'm happy to chat about any of it. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. Thank you so much for joining me and um, can't wait to dig in more with branding and all things like whether it's human design, numerology, astrology, like all the woo woo um, strategies and tools that we've all kind of been using for personal stuff. Like let's use them for business, right? Exactly. Exactly. I love it. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you.